Now, you have the opportunity to interview with a professor or a graduate admissions committee, and you are asked, tell us about your research experience. How do you go about explaining the most important things in your research? That is what I'll cover in this video, so stay with me. Welcome back to this video. I'm Dr. Babajide Ojo, and in this video, I'm going to break down how to talk about the most important things in your research when you have the opportunity to do that with a professor during the master's or PhD application process. Now, as you may have known, I mostly talk about, uh, you know, uh, admission and funding process as it relates to the United States. But this particular video can be um, used for any other country where you have to talk about uh, research. So let's get started. Now, when you have to talk about your past research experience, what I usually recommend is to pick one most important research project that you were involved in and talk about the significant out outcomes. I understand some candidates have a lot of research experience, but just pick one that is most significant or most uh, that you had most control over in terms of um, actually doing the project or writing or any outcome on the research. Now, if you want to talk about this past research um, project, generally you would have to talk about this project in four different categories, depending on the type of research you do, I mean, depending on your field. Now, the first thing you have to talk about is the background of the research. And when we talk about background of the research, you need to make us understand, make um, the audience understand what the problem is. So the problem you are trying to address or the problem you tried to address in this research. For example, you can say maybe we understand that in my area about 40% of people on diabetic medications experience hypoglycemia. So what we try to do in our research is to try to find ways to help me mitigate you know, some of these problems. So that's a problem that you've seen in your environment or in, in the literature that you want to address in this research and in some cases some people will call that the gap in knowledge now it might not be like a big problem but you've studied the literature and there is this gap in knowledge that we have to fill before we can move to the next big thing in that field so either think of a problem you're trying to solve in that project or a gap in the field that you are try trying to fill and like I said, depending on your field, mostly you would have to end this with a basic research question, which is what you will try to address in the research. So for example, you can say, uh, uh, so we asked the question that how does X, Y, Z affect the outcome of ABC, you know? So understanding and solving that question becomes the aim of the research. And all this talk about background should not be more than one to two sentences because you don't want to bore your audience and drain them with um, a lot of literature review on your research. Now, after this, you go to the methods and uh, that means how you, you addressed this question, this research question. Now, basically, when you talk about methods, we don't want to hear about every single thing that you did. Uh, maybe if you uh, if you worked in the lab, you, we didn't want to hear about every single assay. Just talk about one or two key methods important in addressing that research question, and also the key method important in the main outcome or the main result of research. So don't again don't bore them too much about um, the every single detail in your method section. If they want to uh, hear more, they would ask you questions. And the third thing you want to do is to talk about the results 
And when you again, when you talk about the result, you know you are not doing like a long presentation here. You want to talk about one or two key results, key results. And then when you talk about results, it is very important that you, you know, quantify. And this is also important in the background when you're talking about the problem. So either talking about the problem or results, it is important that you quantify uh, your outcome. I'll put a number. So for example, um, your result might, might be, you know, so we found a 20% reduction in the amount of um, blood glucose after applying our treatments. You know, 20%, it gives me more understanding than saying you just, you know, you did this and we saw a reduction. We want to know how significant is your reduction. Um, that's that's not really like a big thing, but it makes you look like an expert, like a pro, in terms of discussing your uh, research. Remember, these professors are not looking for experts. They are just looking for people who are very excited in doing research. And uh, the amount of excitement, understanding you can communicate through your own uh, past research, no matter how little your experience might be, would give them, you know, more interest in you because when you come to their lab, you will probably have the same excitement talking about the project you are going to be doing for your master's or PhD. So again, the key results, one or two results that are important to your research question is just all you have to mention in this interview. Now, the last thing you want to do after talking about your key results is to help us put your results into um, some interesting perspective about the implication of the result. Don't make us assume that this is how this will, will uh, might be useful. Okay, so talk about the implication of your results in real life, if it's possible, if you are in such fields. Uh, but importantly, you want to talk about the significance. That's again sometimes we call it the significance of the result. And if you think your results are, are, are probably not something that, that can be implemented straight away in real life, then you can talk about um, future research, okay? So even though we've seen this, we still need to, uh, we understand that we still need to do, you know, more research, uh, probably in humans. For example, if you've done some animal studies for people in biomedical um, research area, we mostly start with preclinical studies in animals. But before you can actually use such treatment in real life, you have to move to what we call clinical trials in humans, right? So you can you know, mention something like that. Yeah, we understand that these results are, <clears throat> are only important or have shown um, significance in animals. So uh, a future research should uh, will probably look at this uh, in a clinical trial in humans that are suffering from so, so, and so. So understand how this treatment affects humans. So that, um, that gives them the idea that you are someone who thinks about the next step. That's how a scientist thinks. Because when I get this result, I'm thinking about my next research. So don't forget to end your research discussion or research presentation with the implication of the research or future studies. Now, even PhD students or even P uh, PhD um, graduates use these methods to talk about their research when they go to conferences or uh, during any networking session. So that's it on discussing your past research experience. Hey, my friend, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, kindly subscribe to the channel as I will be bringing a lot more uh, important information to you on this channel. And also don't forget to like and um, share with your friends who might benefit from it. Don't forget that you can ask questions in the comment section and I will be sure to answer that as soon as I see it. And also you can follow me on my personal social media pages. And most importantly, you should follow me on the Best Man Academy Instagram and Facebook pages where I give out a lot of spontaneous tips. Thank you for listening and I'll see you in the next video.